Hello, I'm Deb Smallwood, Senior Partner with Strategy Meets Action, and I'm joined today with Mark Brading, a partner with Strategy Meets Action as well. We recently presented at our annual conference, the Resource Pro Conference Insurance Evolution Summit. And Mark and I were talking and we said, gee, we should really record this for our customers and, and other um, acquaintances just to be able to share this content because we think it's of a value. The topic today is around insurance 2030, reimagining the PNC industry. And it, you know, it's a really exciting time in our industry. A lot of change, shifts going on. And we love the exercise of thinking about insurance in 2030, looking out eight years. We know that there's a lot of hype. It feels like there's a lot of activity. And if we just look out one or two years, not a lot of change. But go back eight or 10 years and think about where we were. The iPhone's only been around for 15 years. But think about you and your organization eight to 10 years ago. We know that historically, there is usually significant change every 10 years. So the purpose of this presentation is just, just take a moment and really step through reimagining the PNC industry in 2030. Also, if we could advance to the next slide, the future of insurance, <clears throat> one of the big themes that Mark and I are gonna be covering is it's really about transformed by technology enabled by hum humans. There's a lot of automation going along, a lot of straight through processing, low touch, no touch. But we know that the role of various professionals in insurance is gonna continue, it's gonna evolve and shift and change and that we need that human touch and that human in the loop and that the transformation is really going to come with technology and data. <clears throat> so when we think about our presentation today, the overall flow, Mark and I are going to set the context in terms of current state. Mark's going to go over some really amazing stats on today's world. And then we're going to stop, uh, step through the six, what we believe are forces that are really driving change in the PNC industry. Then we're going to using our go using our 2030 scenario planning exercise and activity, we're going to step through about five or six different dimensions of insurance, talking about what it could be, what distribution and underwriting could look like. And then at the end, we've got some really fun uh, 2030 predictions that Mark and I have drafted to share with you and a quick call to action. So let's get started. Mark, all yours. Thanks, Deb. Um, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a futurist. I love to think about uh, what our world's going to be like in 2030 and beyond and how advanced technologies are reshaping every aspect of our lives and a business. And then thinking about what does that really mean for the PNC industry? But before we go there, it's really important just to step back and take a, uh, take a look at where are we today? What are some of the amazing things that have happened in today's world? And the way we're going to describe this is to go through five key themes, five key themes and some amazing facts related to each one. And the first one, as it says here, is that digital content dominates. Uh, and we could put up lots and lots of statistics here about how much content is generated every minute from all kinds of different sources. And this is accelerating, right? 20 terabytes of data every minute. And you see the stats on YouTube and on emails and you, know, you, you can do text messages or Instagram, whatever. They, they're all just you know, astounding statistics uh, and it's dominating our world. The second one is about the workforce uh, experiencing major upheavals. And, you know, we've had the great resignation. We've got all this massive structural change in the workforce, uh, this phenomenon of quiet quitting. Um, and technology is really, you know, changing roles and creating new roles as well. And then many in the industry are struggling to find and fill positions and the talent that they want. 
So you see come some statistics again that are just astounding, unprecedented, right? 40% of workers plan to leave their jobs in 2022. And, you know, at this state in 2022, we're on track to hit that statistic. There's just been a lot of, uh, of, of moving around, the great reshuffling, right? The third theme is that everything is increasingly connected. Um, we are attaching sensors and devices and IoT, Internet of Things uh, devices to everything that we as a PNC industry ensure, including people, including pets, but obviously cars and properties, buildings, uh, farms, you name it, right? And here's some amazing statistics about the connected world of today. The average car has over 150 million lines of code. Uh, who knows how many uh, Tesla has? Probably a billion, right? just many devices being connected, uh, and then smart devices uh, in more and more homes, almost half of U.S. homes today. The fourth theme is about speed. It's all about speed. So we need speed to process all of that data uh, and to, to, to take action, right? Um, and so the supercomputer, six quintillion, of course, our brains can't process that, right? quintillion. Uh, it's, it's a trillion times a million is, is a quintillion. Uh, and, and that's, and we're not even talking about quantum computers, which put, you know, put those in the dust, you know, uh, much, much faster. And we're not that far away from the era of, of quantum computing. But the, the speed at which we move data with 5G technologies, and then even in the next decade, 6G technologies coming up, it's very, very important um, that we move massive amounts of data very fast and we're able to respond, you know, within milliseconds because, because if we're talking about autonomous vehicles, it has to be that way, right? We can't wait for any kind of uh, second response or two-second response. And the fifth one is probably the most interesting, uh, and it harkens back to the original theme that Deb mentioned about being enabled by humans, right? Uh, the human capacity for invention is amazing, and it's accelerating with technology. So that one of those first statistics was about uh, 500 hours of video being uploaded into YouTube uh, every minute of every day. Um, if you uploaded that same video into a human brain continuously, you could be uploading for over a year. That's the capacity that we have in our human brains. And we're only using portions of that, but, uh, but lots, of, lots of possibilities. And we just continue to innovate and generate uh, new inventions. And of course, the half million patents just scratches the surface because there's a lot of invention going on in industry that doesn't reach a patent level, but it's new, different ways of doing things. So I'm going to turn it back to Deb to talk about six forces that are shaping the future of PNC insurance. Thank you, Mark. Every, every time I hear and see those statistics, it really blows my mind. And that's just a dozen data points, right? So it's endless in terms of digital content, digital interactions, digital enablement, data, technology. And so that is why our theme is really that we're going to be transformed by technology and data, but the human is, is still clearly in the loop. So given all of that that's going on around us, we have identified six uh, forces that we think are directly impacting the PNC industry. We're going to step through each one relatively quickly. <clears throat> and then for each one, we're going to ask a big question, a big question that you should be asking yourself in your organization, really about how you're positioning these. Because these forces are not only changing today, but they're reshaping the future. So let's step through them. The first one is talent, workforce, and evolution. <clears throat> we all know, and we've been talking about it, baby boomers now, Gen X's retiring, the great resignation, as Mark called, what was it, the great shift or reshuffling, right? And now we have post-pandemic, the workforce, the hybrid workforce. So lots and lots of changes going on. We see, I was just on the phone with a CIO of a pretty significant insurer, 
And the first issue that he talked about was around talent, right? It's on top of mind of everyone. So the big question that you should be asking yourselves is how will you attract, retain, and reskill in this hybrid? And it's really is what are you doing about it? And what are you doing differently? And we all know that our talent strategies and culture and all of that all has to be looked at with a new lens. The next one is digital connected world. And, and when I think about digital connected world, I think of two dimensions. One is just digital. The, the ability for self-service, uh, interactions, engagement in a digital world, similar to a lot of the stats that Mark had up front. And then you layer on top of this, this connected world, the IoT, the sensors and the devices that are available. And what this does for our industry is really starts to create different levels of engagement and also provide new sources of data that we can, we can use across uh, the enterprise. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, how will the digital connected world that we live in, all the dimensions of digital and connected, reshape your business? How is it gonna reshape products, our services, our operations, and our customer experiences? Mark, at SMA, like yes, at SMA, we track about a dozen or so uh, technologies that we call transformational technologies. These are the technologies in the artificial intelligence family, the Internet of Things and IoT and autonomous vehicles and digital payments and those kinds of technologies that we really do believe are transformational for the PNC industry. Now, um, some of those are having an impact today. Obviously, some of the AI technologies, machine learning and robotic process automation, uh, digital payments and others. Uh, some of them are more future, right? 5G and edge computing, blockchain, autonomous vehicles. Um, but but these, these are really um, important because they are changing the risk landscape. They are presenting us with new opportunities for operational efficiencies or to gain new insights on our customers and risks. Uh, and they're, they're even reshaping industries and our customers and their needs. So the question that you have to ask is what's your plan to adopt and accelerate the use of AI, IoT and other transformational technologies? And then on the changing customer needs, that, that again is two dimensions. One is, so all our customers, let it be agent, brokers, CS, uh, C, CSRs, policyholders, injured workers, all stakeholders externally, their, their ex, um, expectation in terms of digital self-service and just the way they interact is changing. So we know that's changing. And then when you layer everything that you talk about the risk landscape, in some ways, the risk are changing. They're either becoming more complicated or they're they're becoming less complicated, right? With this automated world that we're living, because a lot of either policyholders on the personal lines or on the commercial lines, they're putting devices, they're putting sensors. And so it is all starting to change. And so the question we should be asking ourselves is: how will our products and services evolve? How are we thinking about? our traditional insurance um, lines of business, and what kind of services are we gonna have or partnerships as our customers' needs evolve and as the risk landscape changes? This, the fifth of these uh, big areas is about distribution. And we believe that there is a revolution going on in distribution. Uh, the landscape is being completely reshaped by consolidation by new technology platforms, by new partnerships, new routes to market, a lot of innovation going on there. And we have been doing significant research. We've really ramped up our research in the distribution space as part of the Resource Pro family uh, that now has a broad customer base of retail agents and MGAs and wholesalers, program administrators, uh, carriers, reinsurers, the really the whole ecosystem. Um, we're really doing deep dive into understanding how that distribution landscape is evolving. And we see the plans um, for the next three years or so, and they're very aggressive. So, and the question you should be asking here is, 
what are the implications of the larger, more tech enabled distributors? Is the balance of power shifting to distributors? What does that mean for you? What does it mean for the technology plans you have uh, for your distribution partners? Uh, what does it mean if you're a distributor uh, for the way you connect with and, and work with, uh, with your carrier partners? And then the final one is around the economy and financial market dynamics. This, of course, is always a major force, uh, a major consideration uh, for developing business plans. But there's, we're in an era where we have a lot of economic uncertainty uh, with uh, inflation. Uh, are we going to be in, going into a recession? Uh, financial markets are very volatile right now. Uh, the next couple of years look um, uh, unpredictable. It's hard to determine what those market dynamics are going to be, maybe more so than in, in some prior eras. So the question is, how will you adjust the business model to dy you know, dynamically these dynamic financial markets and the economy? <clears throat> So let's talk about 2030. Let's let's now start to paint the scenarios for 2030 and uh, move towards reimagining insurance in 2030. Um, we frequently do scenario planning sessions with our clients, and we have this model um, that we've built that is really based on the idea that there's two major axes to think about that really shape the future. Uh, one is how fast tech adoption uh, occurs. Is it gonna be slow? Is it gonna slow down or maybe be just at the same pace of today or continue to accelerate? Uh, so all the way over to the right side of this arrow on the X axis, is it gonna be uh, even at a faster, faster pace? And then on the Y axis uh, is the industry change. Uh, does the PNC industry continue to evolve at about the same pace or do we wake up in 2030 or beyond and find that it's it's very different, that there's a lot of uh, dramatic changes? So that creates these four scenarios. Uh, obviously, if tech adoption and, and industry change are about the same, we understand that that environment it's incremental change. If we have very fast tech adoption, but the industry continues along at around the same pace, there's great opportunities internally in operations uh, to retool our business. If uh, it's the other scenario where tech adoption maybe doesn't occur quite as fast as we've expected, it doesn't accelerate at that same rate that we're thinking it, it will, uh, but the industry does change in dramatic ways, let's say by the distribution revolution that we talked about, we call that rethinking uh, your business. And then really the combination of all of those, uh, when we have rapid industry change, rapid technology, adoption is what we call the reimagine insurance scenario. And that's what we're going to talk about. And so what we're going to do is talk about five dimensions that you need to consider when reimagining insurance. And now the idea here and the way that we run our, our planning sessions, our strategy sessions with uh, 2030 scenario planning is to stretch your thinking, uh, look at what the industry might be like. Uh, we can't predict the future, but we can we can start to understand different scenarios. And then the power of it is bringing that back to today and understanding implications for your short term and near term plans. It's not just a you know, academic exercise. So the five areas we're going to cover are customer experience, distribution, underwriting, operations, and the technology stack. Now, in reimagining the customer experience, whoever you consider to be your customer, agent, policyholder, uh, claimant, uh, some of your other partners, whoever that is, the future is about serving them in the way that they want to be served via omni-channel options. Uh, and whether it's highly personal or whether it's highly digital or it's some blend of the two. But mostly the way we think about it, it's about taking an outside-in view taking a view from the customer's perspective, understanding their journeys, understanding the different personas of your customers, uh, understanding how to respond to and react to their needs, not thinking from an inside out company viewpoint and, and a transaction viewpoint. And one of the things that we think is really um, 
a good way to think about the new customer experience uh, is, is through this quote from Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So, you know, this is where the empathy of the human, right? The being able to relate to individuals personally, this is always going to play a, have a vital role in the insurance industry. And so that's really a, a big part of reimagining the customer experience. The second area of is reimagining distribution, right? There's already a lot happening, as I've mentioned, but if we go out to 2030, let's think about what it means for customers, for distributors, for carriers. From a customer standpoint, uh, just imagine, we know how much expectations have changed just in the past two or three years as a result of the pandemic. So now everybody is on the same digital footing and has that kind of expectation and experience with remote, virtual, digital kinds of interactions. Uh, as we get more and more into the connected world and have new technologies, uh, just imagine what the experiences might be like uh, in 2030. And, and one of the implications is we're probably going to be interacting with customers much more frequently than we do today. And the other aspect is really thinking in terms of micro segments, right? I think we're past the day when we think of very large pools of customers. I know that's the basis of the industry pooling, but I think we need to be thinking of smaller and smaller segments and grouping them in terms of their needs and serving them with, with products and services. From a distributor standpoint, we believe that um, with consolidation underway and with the need for scale in this digital world that large distributors will increase their share of the market. We also believe that direct models and embedded insurance will begin will will gain more traction obviously direct already has but embedded will as well and that those premiums will increase, but the small independent distributors will still be around, but their share of the market may decrease from a carrier standpoint. Uh, to react to customers and distributors, uh, they're going to have more diverse channel partners for sure. And that's already beginning to, to occur. Uh, and there's really a need for more and more specialization to address those micro segments and those changing expectations. So let's let's talk about re reimagining underwriting. And we'll start at the desktop of the underwriter. And we're talking about complex risks where it really is the, art, the blend of art and science. So imagine an intelligent workflow that brings, orchestrates information, data, forms, all the information that an underwriter needs at the right time for the right for that risk to their desktop. There's no rekeying, there's no hunting, there's no looking. It's that one-stop shopping that we've been talking about for the last 20, 30 years in that they're co collaborating with the agent and broker. They're delighting the agent and broker, right? There's that um, willingness to, or not even willingness, they have the capacity now to find creative solutions with the broker for the policyholder. And that the agent and broker, their role changes as well. So they're seeing full transparency. It's fast, it's easy, it's collaborative. <clears throat> and the agent and broker at the, in the end has a winning value proposition and they're winning new business and, and have high retention and renewal rates as well. When we think about operations, this this one this one hurts my brain a little because through the years of automation, we have left that 80-20 rule that that 20% of non-automated has turned into a lot of handoffs, a lot of manual workarounds. And, and sure, when we look out 2030, reimagining operations, simple risks will be straight through processing through rate quote bind issue. And even endorsements will be low touch, more automated. But on the complex side, what we see is the, the four, I, four A's, which is automating those auto operations beyond the RPA and the chatbots that we're seeing today that we're going to really use 
other levels of AI and data. We're going to use AI for insights, new kinds of insights to run our portfolios and understand our operations. It's going to be very easy for us to adapt with new technology and tools that's going to enable operations and that we're going to expand our ecosystem. And all we know is that the human, that expertise and that empathy that Mark talked about is still going to be in the loop and still going to be in the middle, but we're really going to blend it with a lot of technology and data and partnerships. So that's pretty exciting. And the last is technology, the technology stack. <clears throat> and today it's portals, BI, core systems, policy billing claims, agency management systems, rating, quoting systems. And when we look out 2030, it's going to be more words like digital, digital platforms, digital payments, digital enablement, artificial intelligence, low code, no code, uh, sensors, new kinds of user experiences, that 5G edge computing, data and analytics, and core systems will be there. Hopefully, we'll, they'll be modernized, they'll be in the cloud, they'll have APIs, and that will be able to layer all the, the new capabilities out there. So pretty exciting. So let's talk about our predictions for 2030. We have five, what we call game-changing predictions. The first of those is that we believe that 20% of the insurance premium is going to be flowing through new entities. That may be startups, that may be now going through embedded uh, channels, it may be um, maybe other models, right? Uh, it may be Tesla being an in insurance, right? Um, but we believe that that may, that may occur. Uh, and these are purposely bold to make you think to be a little bit more provocative, but also uh, predictions that we think are, are possible. From a customer experience standpoint, uh, we've already made a lot of progress with self-service, especially it has accelerated throughout the pandemic. But if you look across the whole spectrum of uh, the, every segment of the PNC industry, personal line, small, commercial work, comp, specialty lines, we think that 50% of all those customer interactions are going to be via digital self-service. This next one is that 50% of underwriting and claims decisions will be based on real-time sensors. If you think about our industry and how we price, we price on historical data and current data with loss triangles. Um, claims decisions are pretty traditional based on historical. And so with everything that Mark talked about in the whole digital connected world, we believe that that will cross that bridge and we'll be leveraging uh, those real-time sensors, wearables, IoT devices um, in underwriting and claims decision. We believe that in, in terms of what we're predicting is that for those simple transactions, a lot of the big carriers are at 80%, but across the board, all simple transactions, let it be a quote, let it be an issue bind, let it be a, a first notice of loss, uh, billing, everything simple will be paperless and no touch. And that we'll see new levels of automation for the more complex with human in the loop. And the technology stack, right now, we still focus the majority of our dollars, our attention, our strategic initiatives around core. The, our prediction is that we'll be on the flip side of that and that we'll be spending more money on non-core, all those things that we had talked about. So the call to action is acknowledge, acknowledge changes here, right? We just, there's, we live in a different world and now post pandemic, it is the new norm and get beyond the incremental changes. This isn't about a project here and a project there. This is around incremental change. We suggest that you refresh your strategy with the five dimensions that we talked about and start to build a roadmap for your position for 2030. So we look forward to continuing to work with you and that's our call to action. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you.